and welcome to our LA real estate investing.com zoom call our podcast we do every Tuesday at 3 p.m. Pacific 6 p.m. Eastern we get together every week to talk about how we can individually and as a group make more money and build more wealth through real estate whether you're a brand new investor wholesaler agent or vendor we get together and share as practices I interview industry leaders and hopefully we can talk about real estate deals and look at opportunities for us to be successful um, just a real quick aside before we get started any real estate agent uh, agents only on Thursday, first Thursday of the month, we have a brew real estate social hour at the All Seasons Brewery on La Brea, just south of Wilshire. And if you're a real estate agent and you're on this call and you mentioned you were here today to me, I give you a free beer ticket. So you can have free beer. Don't say there's nothing for free in life. Um, so that's Thursday at 530 and you can sign up uh, and I'll put the link in the chat as well. Or you can go to Eventbrite and ser search brew real estate. So, um, you know, part of why I do these calls is in addition to my business, which I'm a real estate broker specializing in probate real estate in Southern California and building a team, I make more money than I spend and I invest the wealth into um, various things, including real estate. And as a result, I'm always looking for, you know, opportunities for real estate investment. And um, I like to invest with people that I know and trust and see a track record of success and then invite them on the call to come go into a deep dive. And today I came across Don um, at another group's presentation. I just love the concept. The numbers I loved a lot. I just got to tell you. Um, I don't quite uh, play where they build. I'm not really a camper guy. Nothing against it. Just we all have our styles. And I have a wife who would consider a Motel 6 to be roughing it. So it's not what cut our style. But phenomenal investment opportunity. I wanted to share with you guys today. Don Spafford from Happy Capper Capital. Hey, Don, how are you doing again? Nice to see you. Hey, Bill. Great. Thanks for thanks for uh, bringing me back. And I love the chair, man. I think I I think I really just invited you back because I'm jealous of the chair and wanted to see it. Um, so so tell us, just get a little background. Where do you where did you grow up and where do you live now? And then how did you get into investing in uh, camper um, sites? Uh, so currently I live in southeast Idaho. Uh, if anybody's familiar, it's uh, Idaho Falls, Idaho. Uh, we're about an hour and a half away from Yellowstone Park, about three hours north of Salt Lake. Um, I, but I grew up most of my life around Omaha, Nebraska. Uh, I actually grew up in a small town just north of Omaha. Uh, and then I'd say more or less my, my, my adult life uh, lived in Omaha until we moved here to Idaho about seven years ago. And uh, yeah, and you asked about how I got into to the campground space. So, um, so as Bill was kind of alluding to, I guess, uh, we in, invest in RV campground resorts. So not the RVs themselves or uh, or just standard, we'll say RV parks or people are going to go in, in park and, and you know have a campfire. Uh, these are on the, like full on uh, resort style destination campgrounds, they have uh, lots of amenities and fun things to do uh, where people don't actually live there usually. Uh, you know, they come there to have a good time and then go home. So what, uh, how I ended up in this space was, uh, I started off in uh, more like small multifamily, buying some fourplexes, and then uh, got into some other, uh, you know, commercial deals, some some development projects to build some uh, like triple net lease commercial spaces, and then uh, that led me into uh, with, with, with with that combined with the multifamily things, I got involved with another team that does uh, ground up development of large multifamily projects, uh, and uh, so I kind of in, in in that space in the end, uh, and then. I uh, just kind of kind of like Bill, looking for other opportunities, seeing what else is out there. Uh, as you know, aside from these these large development projects that you know take a long time to to come to fruition, uh, I was trying to find some other things that are kind of more quick and cash flow producing, and um, you know, looking into what the traditional you know multifamily syndication as most people do. Uh, I was not personally satisfied with the returns. Um, the, all, all the ones that I saw that were offering, uh, you know, they may have good equity multiples at the end, but really not much good cash flow, at least up front to start off with. Uh, and even the equity multiples were still kind of, for me, I guess, somewhat substandard for most of them. So I was trying to find something better and, and uh, uh, you know, seeing what else is out there. And, and uh, I heard on a podcast, it turns out about a year ago that somebody else had mentioned campgrounds and uh, being the space where I'm at here, again, close to Yellowstone and, and it's a big camping area. Uh, I thought that that was an interesting idea. That's something I'd not considered before. And so I started going to more you know, webinars and meetups, uh, just networking with people in that space that are already looking to buy campgrounds, uh, offering myself initially just to saying, hey, I can help you. If you're looking to buy something here in, in Idaho, I can go check it out for you, take videos, whatever you need. Um, 
and uh, you know, and speaking of, of of realtors, my wife is a realtor as well. So, uh, you know, I was offering you know her services. I give you if you want to buy here, we can help you you know help with the purchase, all that kind of stuff. <clears throat> and so just doing that, uh, you know, natural, you know, networking and progression. I came across a couple guys that had uh, just closed on their first property, and, and uh, we're looking to expand and grow a team. Uh, and so uh, we connected and discussed kind of what, uh, what the goals I had and where I was looking to go. And uh, they told me what they were looking to do and what they had envisioned for for this team going forward. And, uh, and you know, going back to what Bill said too, talking about the returns. Uh, I was blown away when they told me the kind of returns they were able to get. Uh, and so I was like, well, for sure, I'm going to definitely invest in this stuff. Uh, and uh, then to get asked to 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 join their team uh, was, was first at me, you know, again, I, mostly being multifamily stuff, I was still unsure initially I, I was like I, you know I don't really know anything about this stuff um but the more I looked into it and more I thought about it and, and researched it uh, I realized that this was a huge opportunity that uh, I, I did not personally want to let pass by and, and you know years from now regret why did I not you know give that a chance and and, and who knows you know so so I said yeah let's, let's do it I'll take a leap of faith and and uh you know, if it, if it works out, great. If not, at least I tried, right? So uh, so I officially joined with Happy Camper Capital, basically at that initial starting point where they were really starting to grow and, and, and be something, uh, you know, to gain momentum. Uh, and uh, since then, we've yeah, we've grown a lot and, and uh, done a lot more. And, and uh, I've kind of quickly myself, I guess, somewhat unintentionally become the, the face of the company, the, the one out here on these podcasts and, and webinars mm-hmm. talking about uh, what we're doing and uh, interacting with people and, and uh, you know, helping to get the, the name recognition out there. So you're the happy camper capital eye candy. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, I guess I, I, I've got the looks, I guess. <laughs> I guess so. Wow. Oh, I, have a, I have looks for a radio podcast. <laughs> but, uh, you know, the thing that also attracted me was that you guys had a couple examples on your website to share. So we're not soliciting investments today. We're going to kind of look at a couple. Um, but oftentimes you go on, I don't know about anybody else, but I know for me, I go on to other web, uh, webinars or, seven, or uh, podcasts, and people talk about certain deals, and then you break it down. It just isn't quite the numbers uh, that they it sounded like on the call. But um, I want to kind of give a, just a brief overview of one of your recent, or one of your portfolio investments, so we can kind of share with people and walk them through and see what it looks like. Um, having met with you before, so the Beyonder is your company branding for your projects, correct? So that that's our our. Uh campground management company yeah so beyond our camp is our, our management company systems uh when we take over a campground you know, we bring in our own management systems uh you know implement the, the processes the software and everything else uh they also do third-party campground management as well so if another say campsite uh doesn't want to sell but they are looking for somebody to manage it for them to kind of free up their time you know our, our company can step in and do that as well uh, so yeah so that's that that branding is that beyond uh campground management company and this particular one, it looks like it's just outside of Cincinnati, Ohio, maybe a couple hours. So this would be yeah, it's actually it's, some... in, it's in Indiana. Yeah, it's about a, about an hour or so west of Cincinnati. Yep. Okay. And just from an overview, there's some sort of a lake in the middle, and then there's a swimming pool and other facilities. Kind of describe what these facilities are like that are available for. Yeah, yeah, and stuff. there's you know not not including that picture there, but there's also a, a more. Uh, uh, rental sites along the river. Uh, so this one is along that, uh, I think it's the Ohio River. Um, you know, so there's there's campground sites there, uh, glamping sites. Uh, and uh, so, yeah, so this is the one we just closed on, I think, in May. Uh, and, and uh, you know, so to, to kind of go inside of that, too, you know, if, if we want to, want to compare it to some other uh, syndications, for example, uh, you know, we pay out quarterly. So this one closed in, in mid-May, uh, and we did send out our, our uh, Q2 distributions, uh, this last in, end of July. Uh, so, you know, it was only maybe a month and a half of, of, of uh, income there, but still enough that we were still paying it out, you know, right away. Uh, whereas some other, uh, not, you know, other commercial syndications would, would probably withhold those, those distributions for, for a while initially. Um, so anyway, so yeah, so this was, uh, and, and I, sorry, I don't have the numbers in front of me offhand, but uh, I think I'm probably there anyway, but I think it was about 188 campsites, uh, uh, you know, as, as we purchased it uh, with a few cabin uh, rentals as well. Uh, like I said, there's that lake in the middle, a swimming pool. Um, some of those, those buildings, uh, for example, could be used for multiple different uh, activities, that, like the one you kind of see there right above, uh, not not right at the, the, the pool, but kind of right the back there, the bit, it's like a... a uh, I can't think of the name, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, an open space, basically, to have like a, you know family reunions or, or you know other kind of outdoor type parties with the with the shelter on there. Uh, 
Uh, and the building behind it is essentially like a large barn, more or less. Uh, so we could do multiple different types of activities. People could rent it out for, like, say, a wedding reception, uh, you know, some other type of, uh, you know, com company party gathering, whatever. Uh, uh, you know, essentially some like a uh, nearby, you'll say, uh, in, you know, invite the communities to come come from far off to come do some dancing, like a big square dance party or, or something like that. Um, this particular location as well, uh, there was a a a building on the property that was kind of uh, more or less abandoned and we're going to be tearing it down. And uh, in fact, actually the, the, the sellers tore it down for us before we closed. That was one of our requirements. Uh, on that site, we're going to be building a, uh, like a pavilion type of uh, structure for, for concert events, you know, so we can have, you know, like summer weekend concert or something like that to, to get people out there that may not otherwise, you know, be campers or, or want to come out to a, a campground site, but uh, to, to draw them in for other activities such as, you know, concerts or, or, uh, you know, in this case could be even boating or other, other things that are, are on the site that people would come to do to have fun. Uh, and why they're there, of course, spend money on other things. Now, whether or not you want to go there as a customer or not, the our discussion here is more about the real estate investments. So the offering was $3.4 million. Do you remember how much of that was the purchase price? I'm sure you had some capital improvement money included in there as well, right? Correct. Yeah. So, so on this one, um, <clears throat> in fact, uh, um, Man, I'm sorry. I, <laughs> I wasn't more prepared for, for talking about this specific property, but oh, okay. Uh, but uh, hmm. yeah, it, it's fine. Uh, yeah, on this one, actually, we we raised a total of of uh, two point nine. So I want to say I think the uh, if that's correct, Eric, maybe the purchase price was three point four. Then we had to you know between the uh, the the down payment and the capex, uh, I think we raised a total of about two point nine. Uh, and then so or was one point nine? I can't remember offhand now. It's <laughs> been a few months already. We've we've got uh, a bunch of other deals we're working on, but. Um, Anyway, so so yeah, so so we 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 you know, oversubscribed on, on that one, uh, and uh, you know as you see there, that's kind of like our our target numbers. That's kind of on again on the the public side that you can get, you can access and view uh, without registering. Once you register, you do get access to, to much more information and, and more detailed information. Yes. Um, and so so yeah, but as as it is, we, we kind of put a standard say target uh, cash on cash around that amount um, with the target you know ARR or IRR around that that range. Uh, you know, at a, on a specific deal, we may get uh, you know better than that, but uh, we kind of just say that's what we we generally target to, to shoot for at at will say a uh, conservative level to to expect on on our average deal. And so um, you're going to end up doubling your money in that five year period, basically. Um, well, most likely tripling. Yeah. So so uh, between the, the the cash flows and the equity, uh, you know, we tend to have uh, two point five to three x multiples on our on our property. So. Uh, for example, you put in say a hundred thousand, uh, you, you'd expect to, you know, get around maybe a hundred thousand just from the cash flows alone. Uh, and then, uh, you know, also the equity at the end to, to basically, you know, basically you're, you're doubling your money from the cash flows, also double your money from the equity. Um, so yeah, more or less, you know, in this particular case was 50,000 minimum. Does that, is that for accredited investors unaccredited? How does that work? Yeah. So, so as of now, we do all of our deals as 506B, which means you do not have to be accredited. Um, so we, we purposely do that uh, to allow more people to get into these types of opportunities. Uh, you know, our, our ultimate goal is to help people to improve their finances and become accredited investors over time. Uh, and so we don't feel it's like a fair or a right to, to cut people out of those opportunities. Um, you know, I know myself, even a few years back when I was trying to get into some syndication deals, it seems like all the best ones that had the best returns were for accredited investors only. And, uh, you know, I felt left out. So uh, we're, we're, we're trying to accommodate everybody and, and uh, you know, allow people to get in, which is why, you know, we can't necessarily talk about any specific deals or, or current offerings at the moment. Got it. And um, well, we can't talk about, you know, a particular deal in general, one of the questions is, is there seasonal fluctuations? Like I can imagine, I'm from LA, yeah. uh, I can imagine <laughs> uh, November, December, January could be pretty cold in uh, semi-rural Indiana, near farmland. Right. What's, what's it like there and what, what's the cash flow look like? Are the people who still go away those times of year? Are they going away because it's Christmas? Are they, um, are there, is there something nearby that's drawing them or is it is this seasonal business? Sure. There's well, there's definitely some seasonality to it, no, no matter where it's at. Even if, it's, even if it's in California, Arizona, Florida, um, you know, there's warmer states. It's still going to have some seasonality to it, as more people tend to travel during you know the summertime anyway. Um, so so yeah, there there is a a uh, we'll say a you know on peak season and then you know the off season. Um, 
so the way that works when we, when at least when we analyze a property, we look at, of course, the, the full year income on the property and not say, okay, what's it earned only during, you know, the summer months. Uh, so as long as the, the full year still meets the, the results that we're looking for, we're still, you know, happy to pursue it uh, and look into that. Um, you know, if it makes, you know, a ton of money just from some say March to say October, uh, then, you know, we're finding those off months, not producing as much and, and still, meet our, our year expectations of getting over that, you know, 12, 15% cash and cash. Um, so in some cases though, we will still full find that uh, most of these places are, are owner operated first of all. So the owners will typically just close them down completely during winter uh, to not to, you know, deal with it. Or, or uh, in some cases they live elsewhere that they'll maybe go back home themselves someplace else. Um, and in that, those types of cases, we find ways that we can still produce revenue even when it's potentially, you know, essentially closed. Uh, and that could be some simple things just as like RV storage, you know, boat storage, you know, people still want a place to, to keep their RVs. And so they, they pay to store them somewhere. So it makes it easier to keep it there where they're going to be using it anyway. Uh, we'll still have some generally some cabins that will on site that people might want to rent for, you know, like a winter getaway or, or, you know, family, family activities, whatever, uh, for close to like a ski area, they can still stay there and, and, you know, drive the ski areas. Uh, we still find other ways to be creative as well. Um, you could potentially, and, and we are looking to doing this in some of our places, is um, uh, uh, connecting with some local businesses that do Christmas light displays uh, and set up a drive-through Christmas light display throughout the, you know, one of these campsites. So uh, people will still come and, and you know drive through there and see the Christmas lights, and we still make money up from that deal as well. Um, so there's there's ways you can definitely get creative and, and find ways to to uh, still produce income. Uh, in some cases, we you know we may explore with with our investors. We we of course keep us open for a, a uh, more or less a vote. I guess in some cases, if if it were to be a case where it is one that does have to completely shut down for whatever reason, uh, you know we would consult with our investors and see if they are okay with with holding some of those cash flows during that peak season to to provide higher during those off season, um, or if they're okay with just receiving less during those months and and more in the on season, uh, knowing that the, the full year cash on cash are still going to meet or beat their expectations anyway. So this can be seasonal, but that's part of the business. So you guys just have different methods to work through all that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. We, we know it going into it. So, you know, we analyze it based on that. Fantastic. Well, you know, and again, I think it's not a matter of whether or not you would go to Cincinnati or you guys have other projects in other areas. It's about this as a business. There's a cash flow created by it. There's demand for the product. Um, like anything else, there's a value add component to it. If you buy something that's run down and you improve, I know I've talked to you before about other projects where you guys have maybe added um, features. Um, I think you mentioned mm -hmm. this one, a CP Hollow, where you actually had like a, um, I think boat docks you guys added, to, like it's on the river somewhere, or it was another one where it was on the river and you added some additional boat docks and sources of income. Can you can you talk about in general what that looks like? Yeah, so so just in general, yeah, we we every deal that we purchase and provide to our investors is a value add. You know, and like you said, you, you may think of how do you add value to a campground. Um and that kind of goes back to just you know whatever creative things you can think of really. So the the, the good side the good thing is there there's almost you know unlimited upside potential of anything you can do. So you know something you can think of doing or providing, you could probably put it there and, and make it work. Uh so in, in some cases, yeah, if there's uh, you know, it's kind of more of one of the ones that we were currently about to close on now that uh, has a, a boat dock uh, on a big lake. And uh, there's a waiting list of people that want a boat slip. So we're expanding out that boat dock. Uh, you know, so in general, what we typically do at, a, at say, a basic level, uh, we're going to want to improve their systems and, and software, get a better online presence to get the online reservations, as most of these places currently only do phone call reservations. Um, so we're going to make that you know more efficient and, and better for people that, uh, that want to do that and can do that. And with that, of course, comes some dynamic pricing. So uh, if the campground gets more filled up, those remaining spaces go up in, in, in price. Uh, very similar to what you know a hotel would do. You know, if you were to make a reservation today, that's, it's going to be a different price tomorrow. You know, so um, that's kind of how that works. So just doing those basic things right there, that's going to improve the income by at least five percent uh, is what we've we've seen. Um, and then you know we're going to uh, where it makes sense to do so. We prefer to find properties that have enough land to to expand them out, to add on more campsites. Uh, that could be a mixture of RV pads or, or like cabins for short-term rentals, uh, even just dry camping space for tents and things like that. Um, uh, you know, adding on other amenities, such as you mentioned, um, or like the one we're doing that, that with that, uh, rising sun, you know, adding on, uh, like a venue for, for concert events or other activities like that. <clears throat> uh, in some cases it could be adding in, you know, additional things like a pool or water park or, you know, other types of water features. Um, we've got some that are on lakes that we're, you know, putting in like big, uh, like inflatable, 
uh, you know, what do you call them? Uh, I don't know, inflatable things that people crawl on and jump on and slide down, all those kind of things, you know, uh, put those on, on there on the lake for people to use. Uh, you know, we may have some, some like paddleboard rentals, uh, uh, jet ski rentals, uh, you know, people that do some, some, uh, pay for like excursions on a boat, people would take them out in a boat to go fishing or something. Um, you know, so, so anytime there's wa a water feature, it's great. You know, people can much do lots of things there, skiing and whatnot. So people will definitely come out there. More so than just the camping, they want to come. To, again, these are resorts that we're we're after, not just playing campgrounds. You know, so people want to come here and have fun, and uh, even if they're not campers themselves, they'll still could drive out there to go hang out at the lake or, or something. Um, you know, in, in other cases, it's uh, simple things like reducing our expenses. You know, a lot of these, when you, when you when you pull into a campground with a camper or RV, you want to plug into electric and, and water and that kind of stuff. Uh, typically, the the owners don't charge that back. They just include that in, in their their rental price. Uh, we are going to put in some uh, like wireless meters that can uh, charge them for their usage. Uh, in particular, as we get more electric vehicles coming through, we want to make sure that uh, they are paying for that usage uh, and not us covering it all. Um, uh, other value add, you know, just uh, you know, improved Wi-Fi. Uh, you know, as people more more people now work from home or work remotely or want to be on the road. Uh, they need good Wi-Fi for that work, or or just the people that like to come there for their uh, Instagram pictures for the uh, you know RV life thing that's happening. Uh, you know, people want that that good strong connection to to do their online world. Uh, so we make sure we improve that, have that you know up and running and great. Um, you know, having good clean bathrooms and and shower facilities for people to use. Uh, that's a big plus. Uh, you know, of course, coin operated laundry uh, have those on site. Um, yeah, and I guess just from there, like I said, it's, it's almost the sky's the limit. You know, if, whatever makes sense to, to do at the site, you know, what fits in the area, um, we, we seek to do. Um, you know, we could potentially, depending on where it's at, and, you know, something that we're looking at now may include some, uh, like, horse features. You know, people, we've had a lot of interest from people that are asking for uh, places to to bring or, or stable their horses. Uh, so we're looking at some some areas that could be reserved for that. People that have horses and on their trailers can come there and pull in some horses. We may even ourselves provide some, like, horseback riding uh, options and trails for people to, to, to do that as well. And again, that's something that they'd, they'd pay to use. So um, lots of different ways you can, we can uh, add things, add value to increase the, the income. And I think the key thing is, um, you know, this is a business, like a lot of businesses, it's becoming from localized to maybe regionalized and your company is trying to piece together and get some of the efficiencies with technology mm -hmm. and by putting a couple together. Um, and, um, so to me, that just seems makes a lot of sense in the market we're in today that you would uh, find companies doing this kind of thing, buying. I know my, I brought in my friend, my, uh, my uh, designated um, rural occupant, Avram Gordon, is a good friend of mine, who he and his wife go to um, campgrounds in similar kind of areas. And so he's, I think like I know who actually could put a, um, could put bait on a hook and actually catch a fish with it. I don't actually know anybody that does that besides him. So I brought him here to see if your uh, offering was authentic. Sean, you can as well. That's a good, good to know. But uh, anyhow, but I think at the end of the day, it's a business. And I think it's um, about right sizing something and adding efficiency to technology. And as a result of that, you guys have some fantastic returns. And I really wanted to share that with everybody kind of in my group. Somebody had their hand up and it looks like you left. So I don't think that's an option anymore. Um, so for everybody on the call here, this is meant to be participative. I get you don't understand all the details, and it's not meant to be. It's really meant for new investors to look and get started and to um, ask some questions and to learn along the way how to be um, better uh, and more successful at what you do. So if you have questions, feel free to raise your hand or put it in the chat box. The requirement is if you're going to uh, come to the chat box, I'm going to ask you to put your name on, ask you to put your camera on, and then we'll have you unmute you to participate because we have had a couple of people come in here that are causing some problems. We did have one question in the chat box, which was asking about, and I'm not familiar with these terms, your ARR and your, what was the other one? Uh, COC, so uh, return, yes. cash on cash return, okay. Uh -huh. And ARR, I'm not sure what that is. Your, uh, maybe IRR, that is what he's asking. And COC return, how's that handled the process? So do you mail checks? I imagine that's what he's asking about. Do you mail checks or do you ACH for payment of your, um, yeah, we do. We do ACH. Um, we, we do have a few uh, checks that go out for people that have uh, special circumstances, um, but but typically we, we we prefer to do ACH on, on everything. Um, and yeah, we do take, you know, of course, people's personal uh, cash investments. We, we take uh, you know uh, IRA, uh, you know, self-directed funds. Um, so we we pretty much handle all those things. But yeah, we, we try to keep things simple and and uh, and efficient to do uh, ACH for all that. 
can I just tell you that they're so nice to get deposits via ACH? You know, I, everybody else, but I have a bank account. I get emails when there's deposits, and I, when I get emails, it says my husband deposited my account. That's just the best. Uh, I, I get, I have a number of different business things to do that, investments, and for anybody who doesn't. And I think that's the key is I want my money to be, um, you know, working for me as hard as I work. And I tell people I'm the pimp in my money or my, my girls on the street, and I want them to work and provide a return. And, uh, you know, that's probably not a very good analogy because you want people, you want your, your investments treated properly. You want them to be successful. You want them to, to feel good. So, um, but definitely I want to get a return for my investment. Right. And AR is uh, annual recurring revenue fund. We talked about that. And 21%. So you had it listed as, that was the, tar- so uh, Eamon, that's their target ARR. And mm-hmm. I think what that means is at the end of the year, at the end of the period, five years or so, when you not only have, uh, distributions, but then at the end you have some sort of refinance or sale process. The total return will average over that five years. You're hoping twenty three percent, correct? At, at, like right, like he said, at the at the annual rate, yeah. So, um, and again, that's that's just the, the target. Um, you know, we we uh, want to always you know under promise, over deliver. So so even that target rate, um, you know, it, it's it's higher than most anything else you'd, you'd see around. But uh, we strongly feel that uh, we, we we can easily reach that number. Um, so yeah, so so ARR is, is what we put on there. But uh, we, we typically we we when we talk to investors that are you know at least the you know and, and again I don't, I don't know the, the level of everybody here, but uh, uh, we typically prefer to more of like IRR has is the number that most people like to see and and uh, uh, you know so we we uh, with the IRR rate uh, we're looking at uh, on an average between twenty to twenty five percent IRR uh, over that period. Yeah, that seems like a fairly typical number in. Um, a typical in the sense that's a target and then to be able to achieve that. But again, a nice piece of it along the way at 11% because we're not seeing those kind of cash returns. Why do you think the cash returns you're getting are a little higher than other investments, you know, other than, let's say, standard multifamily? Is it because this is a newer area and the margins are better because you are, <clears throat> you know, what, what do you think the reason is? Well, typically, it's if you, if you want to look at it and c- compare it to like other uh, rentals, uh, these sites are more, more, Correlated, correlated to say to like a, a short-term rental. Uh, think of like Airbnb type thing. Uh, so if you want to look at a, like an Airbnb short-term rental as compared to other standard long-term rentals, uh, those short-term rentals are, are typically always going to produce much higher income. So uh, what we have on these properties is essentially like a, a short-term rental at a multifamily scale. Uh, so with that, they produce a, a lot of, of uh, <coughs> income revenue uh, just from, again, just from the rentals alone. Then on top of that, we have multiple income streams uh, from, from other activities there or the, um, uh, convenience stores and things that are there for, for people to, to use. Makes sense. What's the average stay for a mobile home in these parks typically? I'm not paying you down to a, bit, a range maybe. Yeah, and again, these, are, these aren't, uh, to clarify, it's not mobile homes. So, uh, you know. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> Campers. But, uh, yeah, so there's not like, you know, and that's a big big uh, confusion people have that, uh, you know, there's not like mobile home parks at all. Uh, but uh, yeah, for the, the campers, RVs, uh, I'd say the majority of people are there for like a, you know, a few days, weekend, um, some cases up to a month or three months. Uh, we get there some, some of the seasonal ones that are, could be up there up to six months. Like they'll come stay for the full, you know, winter or summer. Um, and you know, but in the end, the most, most of them are not living there. So they go back home, uh, you know, into, to, to their lives. So they're here to get and have fun and, and go home. So we don't have to worry about evictions or, uh, you know, eviction moratoriums and all those things that are involved with, with that process and have to, uh, you know, re- replace carpets and appliances and all those things that uh, typically go on with, with other apartments. Um, okay. Um, and uh, do you see other players, other regional players? I don't know of any national player in this space, I guess. Is KOA, is that a similar concept? And that's an, that's the national competition? Or the national yeah, well, KOA is, is kind of similar to our Beyonder uh, for the campsite management. Uh, KOA is a, a franchise company that, uh, you know, franchises campgrounds, um, and so with that, uh, you know, they 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 are our competition in that space. Uh, but they are not, uh, uh, as far as I know, anyway, they're not purchasing campgrounds like like we are through a syndication model, anyway. Uh, and is a plan at some point at the end to um, uh, resyndicate, or is your plan to sell? What what what's the game plan at the end? Uh, I know you're not necessarily commit to it, or you're open ended, and the market. Is going to dictate, but what what do you right. think is the game plan you're pointing towards? Yeah, so so again, going into these, uh, the plan is always a five year hold. Uh, we if if we hit our numbers sooner than expected, we may look to exit sooner. But uh, uh, the, the plan is always five years. We don't uh, include any you know refi in our projections just because that would 
throw off our numbers if, if we don't do it. So we don't even include it. Um, but uh, yeah, so after five years, you know, we would plan to uh, do one of two things again, like I said, depending on what's happening in the market and, and uh, how crazy this space is, as we do see that we are very early at this point, you know, five years from now, I think it will be a lot more um, competitive than it is currently. Uh, if you want to compare, like, say, mobile home parks or self-storage, how they were five years ago when not many people were doing them. And, and right now, today, there's a lot of people involved. Right. Um, so we see that we are definitely headed that way. I do know of many other groups that are getting involved in, in campgrounds. Um, so, yeah, so depending on what's happening in the market at the time, we would either uh, obviously sell it on the open market to, to you know, third-party buyers um, or the 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 for sure plan that uh, will happen no matter what. Uh, when I say no matter what, but, but you know, if, if the market conditions are not... Uh, uh, as hot as, as we think it probably will be, but uh, we will still at that point look to refinance uh, to to pay off the, the investors, get them their, their returns as expected. Um, so that that five year period, yeah, that would be uh, one of those two options: we either refinance it or or, or sell it off. And either way, the investors get their capital back plus their their equity out of the deal. Right, and with those kind of cash returns, hopefully you have a nice investment. So he's holding on to it at the right. end, so you catch up the investors. Very nice. Well, good. Well, um, so who has questions? Um, Anybody here been to a campground like this? Uh, anybody a regular user of it? Never saw the business. And all of a sudden now, um, you can drive to campgrounds and make that a business uh, expense. Um, <laughs> or anybody looking at investing in these kind of things? I, you know, I've looked at public storage. I looked at some other alternatives. And, and um, personally, I keep coming back to large multifamily projects, and I've been happy with it. Dave Weinerman, you've been to a Campground recently, you looked at as investment. Give me a little in, intro into what you've been involved with. Uh, thank you, Bill. Uh, actually, it's a, a little different than what you're doing. I'm, I'm familiar, Don, with your model, and I, I applaud you for what you're doing. Um, the project that I'm in, uh, involved in right now is a, a luxury um, mobile home uh, park uh, concept in uh, Boulder, Nevada. And uh, we're talking about folks that, that are driving, you know, again, a little bit more expensive, but they're driving, you know, half million dollar motor mobile homes. There will be a uh, very similar to what you described, but hopefully a little bit more luxurious for what they're trying to achieve. Um, yeah. They're looking at, uh, you know, infinity swimming pools and and gourmet uh, clubhouse and a 27 hole golf course that's already on the property. I've visited yeah. the property already, so I'm helping them raise substantially different numbers, too. But um, but definitely, you know, similar in concept. They have some other projects that are very similar to what you're talking about, too. So um, just I'm familiar with it. I like the model yeah. and, um, yes. and kudos to you. Yeah, yeah, thanks. Yeah, that, uh, that does sound similar to what we're doing for sure. Uh, you know, and and in some of our, some of our properties, we, you know, are not, uh, you know, we're not targeting a specific group saying only, you know, th this or that. Uh, kind of open for everybody. We typically have some spaces that are kind of more for those uh, very high-end uh, Class A motorhomes uh, that that need a you know big space to to put in there and lots of room to expand out. Um, so so we have some of our campgrounds that have uh, space for for everybody. But uh, our end goal again is we're 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 these are value adds. So we're taking maybe what would be maybe a lower end or, or uh, you know resort property and, and convert it to a much higher class uh, property to to get more 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 people to come there and want to come there that are again not not just there for camping alone but they want to that. Uh, uh, interaction and, and fun activities to do. Nice. And right. which you think golf course too. We, we do have some of that. Our, you know, someone golfers. just mentioned something in the chat about Quartzsite. And uh, one of the fellows that I work with actually just went went on into a contract to acquire a, a motor a mobile home park like you're describing, like you have yeah. in Quartzsite. Um, right. So um, it may be the same people. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm, it, I can't imagine that there are, there's more than one in that small city called Quartzsite. Um, <laughs> but anyhow, I don't know if you're familiar with that. You're you're uh, in the Midwest, uh, right? Primarily. Well, so so we purchase nationwide. We we look everywhere. Um, you right. know, we we uh uh as of right now, primarily we we've we've had most of our properties in the Midwest area in different states. Um, but uh, we've had we have had some. We're working on some others that uh you know in, in other areas too, as like well as Florida and Texas as well. So um yeah, we we, we look everywhere. Fantastic. Um, and then I, I saw also um, Eamon was in, says he's interested in this type of opportunity and hear who the revenue partners would be. So when you say revenue partners, I'm not sure what that means, other investors. Um, I'll put the contact info, if you're interested in more info, uh, Eamon, in, in uh, talking to Donner's team, um, happycampercapital.com is the name of the 
website mm-hmm. is, the, is the website and it has the information on there and I, having been there personally you go in and you sign up and then you'll, they'll send you some detailed information and you can go and look at the upcoming investments and such and participate that way as well as talk to them so happy camper capital.com would be where they go for more information yeah yeah and you can definitely on that site uh uh find my information on the on our about us tab um so if you can even directly there set up a, a call with me if you'd like to nice and then uh, william asked again what's the effect of weather and fires have and i guess the answer is every camp counts different right some are in fire areas some are not some have extreme cold some don't so it just depends on which which property you're looking at but certainly there's a seasonality to this um, like there is in motels and hotels and other similar properties yeah yeah I mean, obviously you know we, we have to take that into consideration with the the insurance that we get to cover that as well um obviously some uh locations may be at higher risk for you know hurricanes tornadoes floods um all types of things can can come into play but uh you know we we uh try to do what we can obviously to to uh uh account for that with with the insurance obviously we can't predict what will or will not, won't happen uh, there's always risk you know anywhere we, we could purchase so um yeah, not much. Not much we can do to control the weather. Um, your question from Angela: Do you lease the concessions, like the restaurant and store? Or do you just operate them directly? Right. So typically, the the uh, the concessions store we we would have that as ours. That would just be part of the property. Uh, we just have a staff member on site that would operate that. Uh, sites that do have a restaurant on site, though, uh, we would lease out the building. So we would do not want to run or operate a, a restaurant. Um, but yeah, if the building's on site or if we add building to there. Uh, we would lease it out to a local business that wants to come and run the restaurant there. And concessions would mean what? Um, supplies and basic yeah, snacks like a convenience and... store things. Yeah, snacks and uh, maybe fishing supplies, that kind of stuff that uh, you know people would would want or need. You know, drinks and ice and that kind of stuff. I have fishing supplies. He's really interested in all that. <laughs> <laughs> My only fishing supply is DoorDash to call to have delivery from the fish grill, but. Uh... <laughs> um, but again, this is the business and the cash flow. And I think that's the thing that's exciting. And I think most importantly, also, if you look at uh, over Don's, uh, his left shoulder on the right side to us, uh, invest where you play. And I think it's important to know a little bit about the geography maybe and or the product that you invest in. And in particular, if this is an area that you know something about or you use mm-hmm. yourself, what a fun way would be to invest as well as to um, go and explore, you know, if you're a camper, what a great way to do that. And it's not just campgrounds, you guys do um, RV resorts which are, I guess, a little bigger than just the camper area. And you have a marinas as well that you're uh, you operate as well as looking to get more. So, uh, mm-hmm. you know, I saw Ozarks, I guess that's a similar uh, situation, though those are houses in there on most of that. Uh, there'd be an associated marina and camper area and concession stuff that you might be um, involved with. Yep, that's correct. Great. Well, look, fantastic investment opportunity and definitely worth looking at. I, I keep talking about, I keep coming back to it because I look at the numbers and I like them so much. And I know you guys are getting more and more um, experience as we go on here with this process. So I wish you continued success. Any last questions for, for Dan regarding the, cap, the uh, Happy Camper Capital program or in general, just the space? No? No, well, look, Don, thank you. Uh, hey, Layla, how are you doing? Nice to see you. She's kind of new to our group. Uh, Layla's out in the Inland Empire, does what insurance, I think, right? Life insurance and wealth management products. That's a quick shout out. Okay, just want to quickly say hi to you. Great. And oh, there you go. Isn't a lot to unmute. Yes, life insurance and investments. Thank you so much. Sure. And everybody should feel free to put your contact info in the chat box. Um, you know, the idea here is a network with, with each other. If you're looking for somebody to invest with and looking for somebody to find deals for you, put it in there. And uh, Don, I just want to thank you for your time today. Thank you so much for sharing with us. And then, again, the last chance, I would just say happycampercapital.com if you're interested in more information on his investment. I really appreciate you. Yeah, my, my pleasure. Thanks, thanks for having me. For those of you in the LA area, next week uh, for Real Estate Agents, we have a live event we do once a month on the first Thursday of the month. It's Brew Real Estate. It's at the All Seasons Brewery. Um, and if you're a real estate agent and you're on this call and you mention the call, it's free. Uh, I'll give you a free a ticket for a free beer. Um, it's next week. It's at the All Seasons Brewery on La Brea, just south of Wilshire Boulevard. They have valet parking in front, um, as well as parking in the area. And it starts at 5.30 on Thursday, the first Thursday of the month. So that's two days from today. So if you're interested in joining there and being in person, love to have you. I'd love to meet you in person. If we haven't met, and if we haven't met before, love to see you again. So to everybody who's on the call today, thank you for your time. Thanks for participating. We, this is the 
LARealEstateInvesting.com podcast. We do it every Tuesday, 3 p.m., 6 p.m. on Eastern Time. And we live stream it to YouTube and Facebook. And I appreciate you guys participating. Make it a great week.